Good afternoon, uh, Grade 12 Tourism Learners. Um, we are, um, my name is Serena Jordan and I am the Educational Specialist for Tourism. We are just going to give two minutes time. I see there's still some attendees that is joining the session. So we are just going to give them a few minutes time just to, to join the session and make sure that they are also um, on track and um, know what we are going to do today. So just hang on, hang tight. We will speak to you in two minutes time. Okay, it seems like everybody has now joined our session. Um, grade 12 learners, just to introduce myself again. My name is um, Serena Ordon and I will be presenting the um, webinar today um, for Tourism World Famous Icons. Um, uh, just to let you know, this will be a dual session. In other words, I will be presenting this webinar in Afrikaans and English. Um, so uh, please just bear with me. Uh, we are going to, to do this in a dual session. So as you can see, we are going to discuss the world famous icons and attractions. And then um, we're going to see, um, or you have to, 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 to know which of these icons are then also your world heritage sites. Okay, um, just to go through a few basic things, um, please just make sure that your audio is on and that your speaker volume is turned up. Uh, you will automatically be muted when joining the session. Um, during this webinar, I won't take any questions, so please, please um, put all your questions that you might have for, for us in the question box, and I will deal with all of your questions after the webinar. So please put your questions there, and we will look, um, look at all your questions afterwards. Um, but please just also note that there is a raise your hand um, icon on your dashboard or on the below or on the right. Um, so um, during the session, I uh, will ask you um, just to raise your hand, just to make sure that you are with me and that you understand what I'm saying. So if I ask you to raise your hand, if you can just press on the, um, the, the hand icon. Then you will also know that in your handout box, there is two um, handouts. One is the Afrikaans version and one is the English version of the PowerPoint that I will be discussing with you today. So you can download it from there. And then all other information will then be on your um, dash box. So, net for the Afrikaanse leaders, my name is Serena Jordan, and I am the um, Onderwijs Specialist for the Dienstevakken and Sociale Wetenskappe, and I'm more specific for tourism. So, make sure you make sure that your audio is is and that your volume is mooi hard, so that you alles can hear. Um, as you die sessie um, join, is you automatisch gem gemute, so um, um, ons gaan nie, ons gaan nie jou kan hoor nie. Um, Asseblief, sit vir my enige en alle vraag wat jy vir ons het in die question box. Um, ons sal dan na die webinar sessie, um, sal ons julle terugvoer gee op, op julle vraag wat julle dan vir ons daar gevraag het. Maar ek gaan wel dier die sessie vir julle vraag om daar net julle hande vir my te lig, net so dat ek kan seker maak, dat amal van julle um, wel verstaan waak is en waak trak en dat julle um, seker is, of dat ek seker is dat, dat julle verstaan wat, um, wat gebeur. Goed, dan sal jylle ook in jylle handout box sien, daar is een Afrikaans en Engelse weergave van die webinar wat ons dan nou, um, wat ek vandag met jylle gaan behandel, so jylle kan het asseblief daar gaan aflaai um, dier die sessie, maak asseblief seker dat jylle het afgelaai het voor die sessie eindig, en dan, ja, weer eens enige vraag en ons in die question box gooi, en dan um, sal ons het na die tijd met jylle behandel. Goed, ok, so let's start um, with the PowerPoint. Ok, 
First of all, um, this is just an overview of what is expected of you for term two per week. So last week we did, or I did a little bit of in introduction with regards to world famous icons and attractions, and you will find additional notes on the guided learning platform as well that you can download. Um, today we're going to carry on with famous world icons and attractions, and you will see that there in the brackets um, is just to say, um, World Heritage Sites. I know that World Heritage Sites is only um, discussed in detail for Term 3, but you have to know which of the icons is actually a World Heritage Site and which are not. Uh, and they can ask you this in a June examination to tell them uh, or to tell the marker whether or not um, the icon that we are dealing with is a World Heritage Site. So that's, that's why that is standing over here. Then um, you can go through weeks three to 10 on your own after the webinar. This is just to, to show you what is um, expected of you per week for term two. So net for Afrikaanse leaders, so hier is net die oorsig van um, kwartal 2 se werk. Week 1 het ons um, al reeds begin met een inleidende gedeelte vir jou um, wereldbekende ikone en attracties. Julle sal sien hier so, um, hier so staan wereld, um, erfenisgebiede en haakies hier so. Ek weet het word eerst in diepte behandel in kwartal 3. Maar dat kan van jou verwacht worden om al reeds in kwartal 2 um, te noem wat er van die ikone een wereld erfenisgebied is. So jy, dit kan van jou verwacht worden om al reeds dit te noem vir um, die juni examen. Dan kan jullie op jullie eie deur gaan vir weke 3 tot 10. Um, dit is maar net om vir julle te wijs wat per week vir um, die kwartal behandel um, moet word. Goed. So, if we look at world icons and attractions, we can divide it into a tourist attraction versus an icon. This is a very popular question that you can expect um, to, to get in either a, a test or an examination. They want you to, to dif differentiate between a tourist attraction and an icon. Okay, So a tourist attraction is usually a place that a tourist would like to visit or causes a tourist to visit, and it can be man-made or a natural feature. Okay, So the example that I've given you today is the Arc de Triomphe that we get into France, Although it's very, a very significant or a very particular uh, attraction in France, it's not necessarily an attraction, but the Arc de Triomphe causes people to go and see it, which means that um, France will get tourists visiting France um, because they want to see the Arc de Triomphe. While an icon is something that is world famous, and it usually comes to represent or symbolizes a specific country or city. And that can also be man-made or natural. So once again, I've um, taken the Eiffel Tower, which we get in um, France, and um, that is that is one of our world um, or one of the world icons. If you think of France, if you close your eyes and you think of France, the first thing that I see is usually the Eiffel Tower. The same, for instance, if we um, look at the United States of America. The first thing that I think of if I see or if I think about the United States of America is the Statue of Liberty. So it's usually something, an icon is usually something that represents or symbolizes a, a country or a city. Okay, so here is just a picture of the Arc de Triomphe and then um, the Eiffel Tower that can be found in France. So for the African leaders, here is a very popular question, what um, gewoonlik gevraag wordt in a kwartal toets or selfs in your examens. Um, is om die verschil aan te duiden tussen een toeriste attractie en een koen. So een toeriste attractie is gewoonlik iets wat maak dat een toerist het gaan besoek um, of um, iets wat een toerist hou van om te gaan besoek. So die voorbeeld wat ek hier veel gebruik het is die Arc de Triomphe. Alhoewel dit een baie bekende attractie is in Frankrijk, um, is dit niet is dit nie een icoon nie, maar dit maakt dat mensen gewoonlik um, ook misschien naar Frankrijk toe gaan, omdat hulle juist dit ook wil sien. Teen oor een icoon, as ons denk aan een icoon, dit is een toeriste attractie wat rarig wereldbekend is. Dit is symboliek en dit, um, weet, dit, dit is ook verteenwoordigend gewoonlik van die land. En dan kan het ook een mens gemaak of natuurlijk wees, so as ek my oor toe maak en ek dink aan Frankrijk, is die eerste ding wat ek met Frankrijk associeer, is gewoonlik die Eiffel Toren. Die safte kan ook gesê word, miskien van die Verenigde Staten van Amerika, um, daaraan denk ek dadelijk aan die Statue of Liberty, wat dan um, 
wat dan een van, een van die merkwaardige ikone of um, symboliek is, wat dan ook in die land gesymboliseerd wordt. Okay, the next thing that we're going to look at is, is the reasons why an attraction becomes an icon. So why, why does an attraction um, then go over and, and then become actually an icon? So if we look at the first thing, um, it's usually uh, uh, it, that the tourists find this icons uh, very fascinating because this icon is one of its kind uh, and you can find it nowhere else in the world. Um, the example that I've given you here is the, the pyramids that we can find in Egypt. So that is the only place where we can find um, the pyramids. Um, it's something really fascinating because it, it is still a wonder how they built these um, magnificent um, uh, pyramids and how it came, uh, came to be in Egypt. The next thing that we're going to look at is um, because it's proclaimed as a World Heritage Site. And then the organization that proclaims um, icons as a World Heritage Site is UNESCO. Please familiarize yourself with this name and this organization. You can't, you're going to, to see and come across this quite a lot. Okay, and it's usually uh, proclaimed a World Heritage Site because of its significant culture or its um, physical um, significance that it, that it gives. So there's just a picture of um, how UNESCO's um, organization logo looks like, and they are the organization that proclaims um, uh, icons uh, or places as a World Heritage Site. Then it also gives us a sense of identity. Um, so if we think of the Vatican City, we usually connect it um, with the Catholic faith. So that is also a reason why an attraction can become an icon, or we can link it to famous people as Robin Island and Nelson Mandela um, are linked to one another. Het so net vir die Afrikaanse leerders, die eerste vier redes waarna ons gaan kyk hoekom een uh, attraksie een uh, ikoon word, is omdat rarig, dit, dit is iets fascinerend, dit is rarig iets wat die oog trek en wat mense rarig bewonder, omdat het een in sy soort is. So die voorbeeld wat ek daar gebruik het is die, um, is die uh, piramides. Um, excuse hulle. Um, soos die piramides wat ek gebruik het, omdat het rarig enig in sy soort is en um, mens vind het nergens anders in die wereld behalwe in Egypte nie. Die tweede rede is, is dat dit um, een werelderfenis gebied um, ge uh, geproklameer is dier UNESCO, omdat het rarig iets van kulturele en um, dokke fysische uh, weet, uh, belangrikheid het waarin dit um, want dit voldoen en dan word het as een werelderfenisgebied verklaar. Soos wat ek vroeger gesê het, asjeblief gaan kyk wat er van die ikone word dan um, gesê, as a, word dan dan, of is dan verklaar as een werelderfenisgebied. En die prentjie wat ek hier so vele het, is net om te wees um, wie UNESCO is en hoe hulle lauwe lyk. Dan die derde rede waarom jy ons uh, dit kan, of hoekom dit een uh, ikoon word, is omdat dit een uh, sekere sin van identiteit vir sekere mense gee, soos wat die Vatikaan stad vir die katholieke um, geloof beteken, so dat hulle dit met mekaar verbind. En dan die vierde rede is, um, ons, ons uh, verbind dit betekker met iemand bekend, soos wat ons Robin Eiland met Nelson Mandela verbind. Goed, um, if we look at um, the second two reasons, um, it, it usually it's an ec uh, economic significance that it comes to, um, comes to play. It's usually a pull factor and they are often included in our tour packages. So I've taken the um, Eiffel Tower again as an example. So quickly think of what the economic significance would be for the surrounding area of the Eiffel Tower. So if people go to the Eiffel Tower, they might want to ha um, have something to drink, they might have something to uh, eat, um, they would need some accommodation, or whatever the case might be. So um, the economic significance is not just only for the icon, but also for the surrounding areas, which means that um, not only does the, the, the Eiffel Tower as an attraction get money, but also the workers working for the Eiffel um, Tower, and then once again the surrounding area. So all the restaurants, accommodation surrounding the Eiffel Tower also now gets um, benefit from this economic significance. But the Eiffel Tower is the main pulling factor because people want to come and see this um, significant 
icon that we see in France. The other um, economic significance that we see here is the economic benefits of tourists um, because it reached almost everyone in that region. And then the multiplier effect gets into play. So like I explained to you just now, um, not only the Eiffel Tower makes money um, of tourists visiting the specific icon, but also the surrounding areas, which means that um, the, the, the people um, in the surrounding areas, the, the restaurants, the, the accommodation, all of them now gets money because tourists comes to visit the Eiffel Tower. The multiplier effect uh, gets into play when um, the tourists pay then um, obviously for a ticket to go up into the Eiffel Tower. That money is distributed now to the workers um, that work for the Eiffel Tower. So the workers then gets paid um, because of this money that comes in. The workers can then go home and they can then buy, uh, buy groceries from their local supermarket. So the supermarket in that area um, benefits from that. Um, and so the multiplier effects continues and it snowballs uh, into a, a, a bigger financial um, significance. So net for Afrikaanse leaders, the other two reasons is then van economies van belang. So as ons kijk, um, Na die Eiffel Tower en weer eens, dit kan een baie groot aantrekkingskracht wees. So omdat mense graag die Eiffel Tower wil gaan besoek, kan toeragente of kan toerpakkette um, dit insluit dat jou um, Eiffel Tower ook dan deel vorm van jou pakket en so kry ander producte van jou toerisme, um, van jou toerisme product dan ook voordeel uit, uit die feit dat jy dan jou um, ikoon ingesluit het by, by die toerisme pakket. Die tweede rede is, um, of die tweede economische um, voordeligheid wat hierdie dan nou inhou, is dat um, allemaal in, in die area rondom die, die, die huifeltoering daar uit voordeel traak. Met ander woorde, as daar um, een restaurant is, of een verblijf, of enige so iets wat rondom of in die omgeving is, want omdat toeriste, alhoewel hulle die koon kom soep word, hulle ook honger en doors en hulle moet toch ook ergens bly. So met ander woorde, jou restaurante en jou um, accommodatie trak dan ook voordeel uit die, econo uh, uit die koon uit, omdat, omdat die mense dan nou daar besoek, kan hulle dan ook ander plakjes rondom die koon besoek, wat dan op die ou einde um, vir hulle ook dan een financiële voordeel inhou. Die multiplier um, effect, of die meervoudige meervoudigheidseffect speel dan ook een rol in die sin dat um, die, die mense wat aan vir die Eiffel Touring werk, met ander woorde die, die toergidse en, en die toer bemanningslede of allemaal wat dan deelvorm van die, die werkmanskap van die Eiffel Touring word dan betaal, hulle vat dan daai geld, hulle vat dit dan af hulle families toe, hulle kan dan geld gaan of um, hulle spandeer dan geld op hulle plaaslijke supermarkt, wat beteken dat die supermarkt ook voordeel trak uit die ikoon want hulle moet dan ook um, um, weet, uh, groceries en um, um, goedjes gaan koop om dan weer aan hulle familie te voorzien en dan ook natuurlijk om hier te betaal enzovoort. So die multiplier effect speel dan ook een groot rol as het kom by ikone. Goed. Um, so the next thing we're going to look at is the profiles and the statistics of tourist visiting icons. So it's very important um, from grade 10, you've already, um, in grade 10, you've learned how to profile a specific tourist and why specific um, tourists will go to specific attractions or um, accommodation. So the same will be or will come into play when it comes to icons. Okay, so a specific tourist will visit a specific icon and we need to know which type of tourist we need to approach in our marketing uh, um, marketing campaign or if we have a specific um, package or product that we want to deliver. So we need to know what type of tourist will we attract to certain icons. Okay, so if we specifically look at the profiles, if we take an adventurous tourist, for example, these, these are just, um, just examples that I've given you, you can go and profile each and every icon um, that's in your textbook according to this. Okay, so if we look at an adventurous tourist, Adventurous tourists would most likely be interested in our Mount Everest icon because they can um, explore and they can have a really nice adventure when it comes to um, Mount Everest. Whilst our cultural tourist might um, be interested in an icon um, which is the Blue Mosque. 
So we must always link a type of tourist to a type of icon. Um, this can also be expected from you um, in a test on examination. They can ask you to link a type of tourist to a type of icon. Goed. So for the African leaders, it's very important to know what their profile, what their profile tourist, can a certain icon um, visit. And there we also need to know what the statistics are of um, tourists that certain icon visit. So as we now, for uh, example, to your adventure tourist, look, here you have already learned in grade 10 how to um, certain um, tourist types are profile is and how they um, certain tourist is. In what ons in who ons hulle kan dan kan link na sekere attracties of sekere accommodaties toe. Goed. So as ons dan nou spesifiek kyk na jou um, avontuur toeris, hulle is uh, hulle sal nogal eerder na 'n uh, ikoon toe gaan wat ehm um, jou berg Everest is, omdat hulle dit kan gaan uitklim en sekere avontuurlustige um, aktiwiteite daar kan doen. Die volgende waar ons kyk is 'n kultuurtoeris. Jou kultuurtoeriste sal meestal ikone besoek soos jou blou moeskie. Um, so ons moet weet wat er type toeris pas by wat er type ikone, maar dit kan ook van jou verwag word om in 'n examen of 'n toets um, weer te gee sodat jy kan verstaan wat er type toeris sal wat er type um, ikone besoek, maar dit is ook belangrik om te weet as jy enig in die toerisme bedryf staan um, en jy wil 'n sekere um, ikone bemark en dat jy kan weet aan wat er type toeris sal belangstel aan hierdie type ikone. Goed. So the next thing that we're going to look at is the statistics of tourist visiting icons. So why is this important to know? Why do we have to know what the statistics is of tourist visiting icons? Okay, so the number of tourist visiting icons are also used to plan the following. So we need to also make arrangements when it comes to our icons. Okay, the first thing is our marketing strategy. So as you all know, we are in a lockdown period when it comes to the COVID-19 coronavirus. So all over the news, you would have seen that a lot of attractions um, internationally had made plans for tourists to still see and view the attractions so that the interest don't go away. So we need to know what our marketing strategy will be in each and every situation. So um, they've come on board and they made it um, visually um, uh, available for us to actually go and see what the, the icons still uh, look like and um, to, to actually still keep our tourists in, interested in um, in their icons, okay. So and then today there is a lot of means and methods how to market your icon. You can use Facebook, there's Instagram, there's Twitter, there's YouTube. So there's a lot of ways that we can use um, our market strategies um, to still market our icons today. Then the next thing that we have to look at is the time and the level of maintenance and upkeep of an icon. If we take, for instance, the nor northern hemisphere. Their peak season or their summer season is usually from May, June, July. So then they would um, expect more tourists to come and visit their icons. So in, they know in that period of time or that time of the year, they won't do any maintenance or upgrading on their icons. So they will only do it um, in their off season. So when it's off peak, um, in mostly in the winter times, um, from October, November, December, January, February, then they would do their maintenance and upkeep of the icon. Um, it will just be the opposite uh, when it comes to the southern hemisphere because um, the seasons obviously change. Our upkeep time would be now in our winter time, which is any time from May, June, July, and then um, our peak season, um, especially for say, for instance, um, you know. Uh, you know, for the southern um, icons is 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 on our um, um, summer times, and um, so then we won't um, do upkeep. We'll only do our upkeep in the winter time. Then we need to have some restrictions and protect our icons from possible damage caused by mass tourism. Okay, so we can put certain measures in place if we know it's our peak season time and we know the tourists will most likely come and visit um, the icons. They can keep. Um, they can put measures uh, in place to say, for instance, um, 
only 20 tourists at a time can go through and go and see the icon. Um, and this is just um, just to, to make sure that mass tourism don't um, damage or cause anything to our icons. Okay. Goed, so, um, hoekom is het belangrijk om statistieken te hee oor toeriste wat ikone besoek? Dis baie belangrijk so dat ons weet wanneer en hoeveel toeriste die ikone besoek so dat ons die volgende kan beplan. So eerstens is ons bemarkingsstrategie. So soos wat jylle allemaal weet is ons nou in, in lockdown as gevolg van die coronavirus, maar uh, baie ikone of baie um, plekke en attracties het dit nou so gemaakt dat jy dit nou deestal um, visueel ook kan sien. So dit is nog steeds om jou toerist sy, um, sy, weet, sy um, interesse, sy, sy geïnteresseerdheid te prikkel. Um, so dit is, dit is een baie slim manier of, um, om uh, een bemarkingsstrategie wat hulle nog steeds gehou het om die toeriste sy, sy, um, sy bewismaking en die bewiswording nog steeds van die, van die ikone te behou. En dit kan dees daar rechtig technologies op enige platform gebeur. Soos jylle kan sien, daar is YouTube, daar is Facebook, daar is Instagram, daar is Twitter. So daar is baie maniere hoe die bemarkingspan nog steeds hierdie bemarking kan doen van, hulle, um, van die ikone. Goed, dan is het ook baie belangrijk om te weet, wat is die rechte tijd om, um, jy weet, bykie um, opgradering te, te kan doen aan, aan jou ikone. As ons bijvoorbeeld vat die, die noordelike halfronde, hulle piek seizoen, of wanneer hulle die bezigste is, gewoonlik in hulle somertijd, wat enige tijd van mei, juni, juli, augustus maande is, so met ander woorde, dan kan hulle nie enige herstel of reparaties doen aan, aan die ikone nie. Dit moet gewoonlik maar gebeur wanneer dit bykie rustiger is, met ander woorde, in hulle wintertijde, wat dan meer oktober, november, december is. Dit sal net mooi die teenoorgestelde wees vir jou seilike halfronde. Ons piek seizoen is met ander woorde in ons somertijde, wat dan enige tijd van september, oktober, november is. In ons wintertijde is dan een goeie tijd in die seilike halfronde om dan bykie um, opgradering werk te doen, waaraan gewoon ek juni, juli is. Goed, dan moet ons ook baie versichtig wees, dat massatourisme nie ons ikone beskadig nie. So wanneer dit dan nou piek seizoen is, moet ons seker maak, dat ons bijvoorbeeld regulaties inbring, om te sê, in, in ons piek seizoen laat ons argument onthalde, net 20 toeriste dier die ikone laat gaan, so dat ons kan verseker, dat daar nie enige beskadiging aan die ikone um, plaas vind nie. So dit is ook met belangrijk is, om statistieke te hou, nie net vir jou om te weet hoeveel mense jaarliks jou ikoon besoek nie, maar ook om te weet hoe jy moet bemark, wanneer jy moet bemark, wanneer jy jou opgradering moet doen, enzovoort. Goed. Ok. Ok guys, um, I know there's a lot of icons that you have to go through, and I know that it's, um, you know, that it's a lot of information to take in, um, and it's a lot of, um, you know, things that you have to remember when it comes to icons. So my suggestion would be, um, I'm going to show you an example of an Australian icon, specifically um, Iris Rock. So my suggestion would be to print out a big A3 world map for yourself and then go and print a picture of each and every icon that you need to, to know and that you need to be able to understand um, how it looks like and where it fits in into our world map. So my suggestion would be to print a, I3, a, a A3 world map for yourself so that you can see each and every continent clearly. You, you take the printed um, images or photos of the icon and you go and you plot it onto your world map so that you know if we are talking about Iris Rock, first of all, so that we know on which continent it is. You will see here the red circle. It's um it's it's on the um, Australian continent. So we already know that Iris Rock will be on the um, Australian continent. And so you will take, for example, the Statue of Liberty as well. Print a picture of the Statue of Liberty and go and plot it onto the northern North America, um, where it is situated, so that you know. Um, okay, if I if they ask me something about, for instance, the Statue of Liberty, I know that at least it's on the North North American um, continent, and more specifically in the United States of America. And so you can go and plot each and every icon on your world map. 
goed, so vir die Afrikaanse leerders, ek weet het is baie ikone wat jylle moet leer, en ek weet het is baie inlichting wat jylle moet inkry, so my advies sal wees, is, is rechtig om vir jou een A3 bladseid te vat, en een wereldkaar daarop gaan, te gaan print. Dan gaan print jy een prentje van elke ikoon wat jy moet ken en moet behandel, en jy gaan plot dit op jou wereldkaar. So met, met die Australiaanse ikone, as ons dan een specifiek kyk na Ayers Rock, hy kom voor op die Australiaanse continent, um, of op, op daar specifieke continent, waar die cirkel dan nou is, en dan, so kan jy gaan met elke ikoon. As ons bijvoorbeeld vat die, die Statue of Liberty, ons weet die Statue of Liberty kom dan voor op die noordelike, um, noord, op, op Noord-Amerika, en dan meer specifiek op by die Verenigde Staten van Amerika, so gaan printe printie, gaan plot om precies waar hy moet wees op jou wereldkaart, Dit gaan jou ook een geheel beeld gee, gee van al jou ikone, wat er ikone kom in die noordelike um, halfronde voor, en wat er ikone kom in die suidelike halfronde voor, en dit sal dan ook veel baie meer sin maak om te weet waar wat er ikone is. Um, just for the English learners, uh, I've got to tell you, um, so you, with regards to a world map, you get a holistic view of where all your icons is then situated, then you would also know which icons is situated in the northern hemisphere and which icons are situated in the southern hemisphere, and that will also give you a, a better perspective um, of where all the icons is. Okay, so the example that I'm using is Iris Rock, which is one of our Australian icons. So we said it's on um, the Australian continent, but more specifically, more or less in the middle of Australia, you can see where the red circle is, and it's um, situated in the um, area we, which they call Uluru. So that is where um, your Iris Rock will be. Uh, another icon that we find um, on the Australian on co continent is the um, Sydney Opera House, which is situated um, over here in, um, on, on, on the Perth side. So please go and plot all your Australian um, icons um, on, on the continent so that you know where each and every icon is situated. Goed, so vir die Afrikaanse leerders, maak seker dat as jy dan nou, um, as ons dan nou in diepte kyk na Australia, um, Ayers Rock is dan in die omgeving van Uluru, um, uh, waar, waar hy gelee is, so dat jy precies weet waar in Australia um, Uluru daar nou gelee is. Goed. So, so uh, grade 12 learners, what I did for myself, that you must go and find a way that works best for you. And what I did is, uh, I made a summary for myself. So you can see here, yeah, I said that it's the Australian icons, and it's the uh, Uluru, um, ach, sorry, um, the Iris, Iris Rock. It's located in the Uluru Kata um, uh, Chuta National Park. So I've already made that connection for myself. Then go and, and, and see um, why is this an icon? Um, okay, so they specify it specifically because it's not far from the Alice Spring. Um, it's a gigantic freestanding rock formation called the Monolith. Um, it's also known to locals as Uluru, and it's sacred to the Aboriginal um, site. And then there's also traditional paintings on lower walls and many caves. So go and go with each and every icon and make a summary for yourself. Um, you will also find in the study notes that we have given you a table. You can also make use of the table to summarize the icons for you. But um, Go and uh, go and find out or figure out a, a method that works for you. So once again, I've just uh, taken a picture or um, I've, um, so that I can situate myself where in the world this icon is. So I know it's in, in Australia, more or less in the middle um, is Iris Rock. This is an image of how Iris Rock looks like. So it's very important for you to also know how each and every icon looks like. Okay, and then it will also be expected from you to give a brief um, description of each icon. So I've, once again, I've summarized it for myself. It's red in color, changing in, in shade depending on the light and, um, and time of day. Um, visit um, uh, tourists visiting their sites um, because they might, might um, want to climb it. And then um, Iris Rock is then a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So then I know that this I, this specific icon is then also a World Heritage Site. 
um, if I have to profile and look at the statistics of this um, specific icon, um, I would say that it's a um, your adventurous tourist that might want to go and visit it, even your historical or cultural tourists. Um, you can also find uh, wildlife at the at their red center. It's usually a long trip, so it's it, if you market this specific icon to to a tourist, you must. Um, make them understand that it's really a far trip um, to go to to the Iris Rock. So they must really um, be motivated, and they must really be able to to take or to be able to take that drive into into the desert. Um, so as I already said, visitors tend to be more adventurous. Um, who visits this specific icon? They enjoy enjoy traveling offbeat tracks, and they usually uh, get more or less 400 to 500,000 visitors yearly. Okay, so yeah, this is this is a summary of of the Ayers Rock. Okay, so net vir Afrikaanse leerders, um, hierdie is a opsomming wat ek gedoen het van um, Ayers Rock specifiek, wat deel is van die uh, Australiaanse uh, ikone. So ek het hierdie vir myself so gaan opsom, so dat ek een uh, geheel beeld of een algemene beeld het van wat van die Ayers Rock alles gevra kan word. So as jylle kan sien, ek het myself gaan positioneer, so ek weet nou dit is op die Australiaanse continent, en dit is min of meer in die middel van Australia, waar ek die Ayers Rock kan vind. Ek het ook een printje vir myself hier geplaas, so dat ek kan sien, dat ek het kan identificeer, en dat ek kan sien dat hierdie is dan die Ayers Rock. Dan ek het vir myself in drie kategorieën verder gaan opdeel, ek het vir myself gaan vraag, hoekom is die dit die ikoon, hulle kan vir jou so iets ook vraag, so jy kan sien dat dit een rarige groot vrystaande rok, dit een rotsformatie is, Um, dit word ook dan, um, of dit is ook bekend vir die mense as Uluru, en dat is dan baie ook vir um, die Aboriginals, uh, wat dan in die area woon, so dit is, so my man het een printje van hoe hulle lyk, so dit is een baie, um, uh, weet, een baie uh, speciale plek dan ook vir, 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 die, um, vir die mense wat daar woon, en daar is dan ook traditionele verfkins wat gevind kan word op die die um, mure van, van hierdie grotte wat daar is. En is ook baie belangrik om te weet, dat ons hierdie ikoon dan ook so moet beskerm. Goed, dan um, tik dan of skryf dan ook vir jou uit wat, um, wat die, um, weet, wat ons beskryf, of hoe sal ons hierdie ikoon beskryf het. Goed, so hy is rooi en kleer, en dit kan verander um, met, met die dag en die nachtlig, um, weet, besoekers kan hem ook uitklim, en dan is die Ayers Rock ook definitief een wereld erfenis ikoon. Dan kan ons ook een sekere profiel aan hom um, koppel, wat dan gewoonlik jou um, um, avontuurlustige uh, toeriste is. Dit kan selfs een kultuur ikoon wees, wat aan, aan die, ach, een, een, een kultuur toerist, wat dan belangstel in die ikoon, of selfs een, een historische, iemand wat belangstel in historisch, of weet, weet geschiedenis. Um, dan kan jullie ook zien dat um, baie mense die, die die wilde lewe daar gaan besoek, wat um, gevind kan word by die, die, die uh, Red Center. Dan moet jy as tour, um, agent ook weet, dat hierdie is een baie lang rit, om uiteindelik by hierdie Uluru uit te kom, um, so dat jy die Ayers Rock kan sien. So as jy hierdie ikoon aan een toerist bemark, of aan toeriste bemark, moet jy dan net vir hulle ook dit noem. So jy moet al hierdie inlichting weet van die ikoon, om seker te maak dat hoe jy dit aan jou klient dan bemark, of aan jou toerist bemark, dat jy vir hulle seker is, dat hulle verstaan waar die ikoon is, hoe hy like, en wat daarmee is gepaard gaan. Goed, so, um, baie mense hou dan daar ook daarvan om weet, um, off the beaten track, met ander woorde, om nie op enorm, weet, met jou gewone, traditionele paaie te rijden, nie, hulle hou daarvan om bykie, um, weet, op verskillende paaie te gaan, en dan nou specifiek na hierdie Ayers Rock toe te rui, en hierdie Ayers Rock uh, het dan plus minus 400 tot 5, uh, 500.000 uh, besoekers wat hom jaarlik besoek. Ok, maar grad 12, uh, grade 12 learners, it's very, very important that you keep up to date with all relevant news concerning icons. So if there's something happening to an icon or if there's new information, you need to know what is happening to the specific icon. So go and please take, for instance, Irish Rock and see what the latest news is with regards to Irish Rock. Take the Statue of Liberty. See if there's any new developing news on, on Irish Rock. Because they might um, ask you 
something uh, with regards to an icon, what the latest news is, what is what is happening around um, or with regards to this specific icon. Okay, um, net vir die graad 12 leders ook. So gaan vind uit, gaan kyk wat, se, wat is die nietste inlichting rondom al die ikone. Gaan kyk of daar nie iets belangriks is wat jullie moet weet nie. So vat bijvoorbeeld Ayers Rock en gaan kyk, is daar nie nieuwe inlichting wat jy moet weet oor die ikone nie, behalwe net dit wat in jou handboek staan nie. Want onthou, die examinator kan jou ook, um, jy weet, algemene kennis vraag vraag oor een specifieke ikone, um, om, te, om te sien of te weet of jy heel tyd op datum blij met wat gebeur met die ikone. Want as jy enig in die toerisme bedrijf gaan staan, moet jy hierdie ikoon aan jou toeriste kan bemaak. En as jy nie vir hulle die nietste, belangrikste inlichting oor hierdie ikoon kan gee nie, gaan hulle dolk voel dat hulle hulp ingedoen is, of jy weet dat jy nie vir hulle die nietste inlichting gegeet nie. So dit is baie belangrik om altyd vir jou toerist, vir jou toeriste die nietste, beskikbaarste inlichting te gee. Goed. Um, can I just quickly ask you to, to raise your hand? I just want to see if everybody understand what I said today and if you understand what needs to happen with regards to, to world famous icons. Okay. I see a lot of hands. So um yeah, so it it it's a very it can be a very fun subject. It can be a very much interesting if you actually go into and and investigate each and every icon you, you will really find interesting facts about these icons the last thing that i just quickly want to to go with uh, or through with you is just um we've covered now a lot of theory but how do i apply this theory to a specific scenario in a test or an examination okay so typical questions that you can expect is something like explain the difference between an attraction and an icon make sure that you know what the difference is between the two make sure that you know what an attraction is and make sure that you know what an icon is then they can ask you to identify and match a specific tourist profile to an icon so they can give you a specific scenario and they can say um, this is uh, this is tourist a and this is its profile please link it to a specific icon that you have studied or please link it or they can give you um, tourist profiles and then they can give you icons and they can ask you to match the uh, match the two with one another then a very popular um, question that they might ask you is they can give you as you can see here below it can, they can give you a pictures that's why i say go and identify go and print the pictures go and see what each and every icon looks like so that you can know that if they talk about the time ajal that you know this is what the time ajal looks like if they talk about the Statue of Liberty, that this is what the Statue, Statue of Liberty looks like. Because if you know what the icon looks like, um, then it's important to go and plot it onto your world map. Because they might ask you something to, um, as the example below, they can give you a table as such, and they can ask you to complete. So if you take the time ajal, you must say, yeah, okay. The icon that, that is um, depicted in 111 is the time ajal, you must know what continent it's situated on, which country it is in, which city and area it, it, um, it can be found in, is this a World Heritage Site or not, and they can even ask you to give a brief description of the icon. So that is why it's important that you know how it looks like um, and what is happening around and why this be uh, came to become an icon. The last thing that I must ask you, uh, or that I can ask you, is to give you a, a specific scenario. Say, for instance, something in, um, happened in Italy, um, and they want you to apply the theory to the specific scenario. So they might ask you, what is the icon that was affected by this scenario, or um, what type of tourist um, can be linked to to the specific um, icon and scenario that they have given you or any um, other questions relevant to a scenario. But please take the scenario that they have given you. And um, if you have to give an example, take an example from the scenario so that they can give you the full marks that you deserve. So take the scenario and answer it according to that. Okay. Let's go for the African leaders. Typische vraag wat jy kan kry om dan jou teorie toe te pas op een specifieke scenario in een toets of examen. Een uh, baie, baie populaire vraag wat gevraag word is um, om te verduidelik wat die verskil is tussen een attractie en een ikoon. So maak seker dat jy weet wat die verskil is tussen die twee. 
dan soos genoem kan hulle ook vir jou vraag om een spesifieke toeriste profiel te koppel aan een spesifieke ikoon. So hulle kan bijvoorbeeld vir jou een toeriste profiel um, gee en dan kan hulle vir jou sê, jy weet, dan kan hulle vir jou sekere um, prentjes gee van sekere ikoon en dan kan hulle vir jou vraag om die twee met mekaar te verbind wat die toeriste profiel sal by die ikoon pas. Dan een ander populare vraag wat hulle vraag is, om vir jou bijvoorbeeld een prentje te gee, en jy moet dan die onderstaande tabel voltooi. So dit is ook om ek sê, dit is belangrijk om een prentje te gaan uitdruk van elke ikoon waarmee jy te doen het krij in jou graad 12 jaar, so dat jy precies kan weet, dat as hulle praat van die time majal, dit is hoe die time majal lyk. As hulle praat van die um, Statue of Liberty, dat jy kan sien, oe ja, dit is hoe die Statue of Liberty lyk, en um, wat die rede is, hoekom hy een ikoon geword het, so dat jy die onderstaande tabel kan voltooi. So met ander woorde, 1-1-1, die ikoon sal dan wees die time of jaal, dan moet jy kan invul wat sy, op wat er continent hy is, en wat er land hy aangetref kan word, en wat er um, dorp of area hy gevind kan word, um, is, is die time al een wereld erfenis ikoon of nie, so gaan vind uit, gaan kyk of hy is, en dan moet jy ook een kort beskrywing kan gee van die time al. So die selfde sal jy dan nou doen vir die um, Statue of Liberty, so sal jy dan ook die kolom voltooi vir, vir die volgende ikoon. So maak seker dat jy weet hoe die ikoon een like, waar hulle gelee is op een wereldkort, so dat jy jyself daarmee vertrouwd kan maak. Die laaste type vraag wat hulle jou kan vraag is, hulle kan vir jou spesifieke scenario gee, so met ander woorde, hulle kan bijvoorbeeld vir jou sê maar sê dat iets gebeur in Italië, en hulle gee jou die scenario, dan kan hulle jou enige iets vraag in termen van, um, jy weet, enige ikoon wat al voorkom, en um, hoe, hoe dit die, die toerisme bedrijf raak, weet positief, negatief, so jy moet dit dan vir jou examinator of jou marker dan kan verduidelik. Maar asjeblief, gebruik jou scenario wanneer jy jou vraag beantwoord. So met ander woorde, gebruik voorbeelde uit jou scenario um, om dan jou vraag te beantwoord, maar lees mooi wat van jou verwacht word as jy daar nou gevraag word om um, die scenario van gebruik te maak. Oké, okay. so grade 12, um, this is then world famous icons. This is then the end of our session for the grade 12 um, work for this week. I hope that you've enjoyed it and I hope that you um, you can take this and make it your own and make sure that you know all the icons. Um, please, I'm just reminding you once again, please put all your questions that you have in our question box so that we can answer all your questions. And then also please make sure to join our Facebook page, our Tourism and Tourism Facebook page. There we um, we can assist you, we can answer your questions, uh, we can. We usually post relevant um, tourism information per grade, so you can get more information on there. And also please remember to download your study notes so that you understand and know what um, content needs to be covered per term. So, grade 12 leaders, I hope that you have this session and that you have wonderful found it and that you have your own can make. So, as a brief, on to um, on to slide by our Facebook group, um, where the tourism or tourism um, Facebook, um, pack Facebook place is. There can also you um, get assisted with any general question that you have. We um, post also generally get relevant, um, not the inlichting over the tourism bedrijf per grade. So, hold that up top. Laat asjeblief jylle studie notas af, daar sê jylle dan ook sien wat per, per kwartal, per week behandel moet word. Goed, if you're not registered with Impact, you can um, send us an email. Uh, you can send us an email at info um, at impact.co.za. So as jy nie geregistreer is by Impact nie, kan jylle vir ons e-post stuur aan info at impact.co.za. So thank you grade 12, um, thank you for joining me today. Um, please keep safe and study hard. So, grade 12 leaders, as it bleef, hou nog steeds aan om hard te leer en um, om daar om veilig te blijven, en veilig te wees in hierdie tijd. Thank you all for joining and we will see you next time.